Hey guys, hello. Let me turn this music off. This is the original Princess Bronze. Hello, everyone. Hello. Who's on here? Let me add you to the screen. Let's see. There we go. Hello, Heart. How are you if you're on here? <clears throat> Let me know. I just want to come on here to see. Hey. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you nice and clear. Hey, good evening. <laughs> good evening. So uh, I just wanted to say, um, you know, this is an open chat, an open forum, and we can talk about anything that you want to talk about. And I'm going to try not to <laughs> call your name and, you know, vice versa. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Well, I've been watching you for a while and I enjoy your channel. And oh, so um, when I click on the YouTube link, I don't think I don't think I'll call you. I see you as Braun. So, OK. So, and okay. I've been I've been, you know, one of your subscribers for a long time and been enjoying your content. So. Yeah, thank you so much. I really enjoy, you know, coming on here chit chatting. You know, some of the stuff is a hit, some of it is a miss. You know what I'm saying? But I try to keep going because it's a lot of information that you have to try to stay focused on. And mm -hmm. some days are better than others. But yeah, so I just wanted to, you know, twist it up a little bit and um, bring back what I used to do because I used to come on and have people join my live and join mm -hmm. the chat. Um, we used to do the call-ins, like I'll put the number in the chat and then mm -hmm. they would call in and someone click on the link like you just did. So mm -hmm. I wanted to get back to doing that because there's a lot of stuff going on that, you know, whether it's serious topics, fun topics, or just hot topics, you know what I mean? Yeah, YouTube is not for the week. So I applaud yeah. you for like, just being consistent and staying with it all these years because yeah it i is. mean it's like geez like i over these last two weeks just watching you guys and mm. the doxing and all that which you know maybe we'll talk about yeah i it's not for the week it's Ooh. not it's not i remember when i first got into youtube and I was just doing my thing and I was trying to do my videos not to really be seen or be known. And mm -hmm. I was just doing it to based on what I was going through at the time, whether it was health and wellness or whether it was relationship or whether mm -hmm. it was just working a job, you know, and stuff like that. And I just wanted to come on and, and try to inspire people to keep going no matter what, what they're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? And I was mm -hmm. really talking about a lot of um, health supplements because you know I was in the healthcare field and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but as I got like you know some traction with it and I started picking up uh, you know subscribers, then here comes somebody. They they told me they warned me about the trolls, <laughs> the people that you don't know mm -hmm. who watch your videos or people in your community. They may watch your videos but never come out the bushes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, uh, say hello but then here comes someone posting my address girl they oh my god i've heard of that yeah i was on live and my live was really booming at the time and then these people come in here and when you start noticing the trolls coming on your page your chat um comments start going real fast mm -hmm. so that's how you know they're just copying and pasting copying and pasting the same stuff over and over and over you know what i'm saying yeah so that's what they did yeah i've been docs before so i know what I just wish YouTube YouTube could do are going better. yeah i wish youtube could do a better job at patrolling patrolling that because I've seen people's videos where um this one guy I told you that was do you do you do you do you mind if I mention other content providers or not? I don't I oh no, no I, this is okay. Yeah, okay. this is open chat. Open oh, chat. Oh, so some content providers are like, don't say nobody else's name. And I'm just like, people are gonna go wherever they want to go. Exactly. But you know, one of my my favorites because he is a troll too online um but i saw where wiley had did commentary and i can't think of the girl but actually i think i think we you've mentioned the girl to me and i just figured out who she mm -hmm. was 
And um, she had showed up at his church. What? And I was like, oh my God. So it makes me, you know, I've I've contemplated about, you know, d- dibbling into YouTube, you know. You just, should. You but should. I'm afraid. So I'll I'm afraid. You know the tips that I gave you um before mm-hmm. I told you like create you or page. Mm-hmm. But when you create your page, you know how like when you're yep. creating your, your email, your Gmail, you do mm-hmm. not use real name because that's how yep, I it. did that. You see, mm-hmm. that was one of the first things I did because you were like, hey, you know, you're you're on here with your real name. Mm-hmm. So I, that's why I, I went and I changed it and created it another. Yeah, yeah because let, let me tell you, it's people who don't have pages or don't go live or don't are not content creators. And all they want to do is sit in the bushes and they have all the time in the world to just go and do the negative part of it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. And they will look you up. They will, try, I mean, they will go and just come on your channel and just try to bring the negativity part. But that's a part of, you know, putting yourself on a free flat, a free platform. Right. That, you know, is easily shared because we get shared. I, we can do this video right now and someone sh- can share it, which is no problem because that's how you get more viewers, you get more watch hours and stuff like that. And um, and so you want people to share, but don't share my stuff. You know what I'm saying? Being mm-hmm. nasty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it, it comes with the territory. Well, but. since we're talking about YouTube, what do you, um, I don't know if you've seen and you're a content provider. Mm -hmm. So this person is like, (laughs) you know, one of your peers. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this controversy with uh, Tasha K leaving and going to Africa? (laughs) Oh my gosh. So you know what? I like, I like Cardi B and I like Tasha K. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that, I'm just listening, but Tasha K did, you know, she did the wrong thing and she's reaping the repercussion repercussions of it but i don't think she should have been going all the way over to another country isn't that illegal when you transfer your money all and and to, well, to another country to, to evade paying i think she probably did all this prior to so if she did it before the judgment was done was actually put in place but my thing is like i'm like you know i i could care less about Cardi B and Tasha K. I mean, I don't have anything against Cardi B, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it is. But my thing is like what I don't understand is I'm like, why is Tasha K like like if you if you sue me, Braun, okay, mm-hmm. and you won. Okay. Or and I'm taking it to appeal. I'm I'm not gonna keep harassing you. Yeah, you sued me. And so, so what? So, you know, I'm, I'm going to shut up because I, at this point, I want to say less to encourage you to pursue garnishing my wages. Exactly. So I don't understand why she, I don't understand why she's keeping at her. I'm like, like, what is going on here? Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Is it like, I think what happened, I think Tasha K really hit a nerve with Cardi B because Cardi B got money. I mean, like you getting money, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I think because what it is, I think she wanted to shut Tasha K all the way down. Yeah. And that's why she's not, she's being relentless. And that's why she's not trying to stop well, um, the, the actions. Is- the people allegedly say that Nicki Minaj is paying Tasha Kay's illegal fees. Oh, really? Because I, I mean, the, 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 what I don't understand is that Cardi won the case. I know that Tasha K had she's uh, she's the case is now with the appeal. Uh, Tasha K is appealing the case. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in the meantime, I'm not going to fight with you. I'm going to shut up and let let the law take care of it. I'm not going to fight with you because you have the upper hand. Right. So I don't want to do anything to encourage you, but um, Tasha K, she still is fighting with the girl. It's, it's, it's just, it's, she's a, um, if I was back in school, Uh I would want to do a case study on Tasha K. Yeah. 
That's like going to school when we were kids and uh -huh. you got you got beat up. You kept getting beat up. And every time you like, I don't care if you beat me up, I'm coming back for some more. Beat me you up. You know what? You know what? But this this is a prime example of power. Like you get this feeling of power when you were in a position where you're making this money mm -hmm. and you're being seen. Because you know, remember when Wendy Williams was um there was a lot of controversy about Wendy mm -hmm. Williams, how she started. First, she was just you know a local and Tasha K is reminding me, yep. Mm -hmm. you know, she was local D uh, DJ, whatever, whatever. But she had access to all these these famous people, interviewing them. Then you get to a point where you're like, I'm on their level now. So yeah, I'm gonna be just yeah. I'm gonna fight you just like you trying to fight me, like on your level, like that, you know. And then the thing is, like, the more she she uh, Cardi goes after her, the more she's getting empowered. You know, that's true. Because even when when people you know come at you and say stuff to you, if you're a strong-minded individual, and see Tasha T was already a strong-minded individual, yeah, and she was already being empowered, huh? Do you see what state she is from? No, where is she from? She's from Florida. What? Okay, okay. I was like, you know, as Florida girls, we have a different yeah. uh, mindset. I was like, that's why she be snapping like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I knew she was. I'm I'm sorry to interrupt you, but no. really quickly, I knew that she was because she said something one time. She said, Oh, dirty foot. <laughs> you know, that's our lingo. <laughs> and, said, and then later on, she, but she's from Pensacola, which is a little different, but she's from Florida. Oh, oh okay. Give me one second. Okay. That's okay. an important call. But you okay. can be talking. You can talk. Okay. Um, but just to add to what we're saying, I just feel like with Tasha K, that girl is brazen. But I think, too, with Tasha K, you know, when you're jumping into this celebrity world, um, I think that she, with this whole incident with Cardi B, I think she's showing the difference between famous and infamous. And so I guess you pick and choose which one you would want to be. I would want to be famous, not infamous, because she's infamous because, you know, infamy usually it's, well, one of the reasons is because you became famous off of a, of, of a scandal, this whole Cardi B thing. And when you watch uh, videos and you hear about Tasha's, sto Tasha's story, it's very inspiring. She says that, you know, she only has a ninth grade education. And um, it's inspiring because she started from the bottom. I believe she was like, a, she was a waitress. And I guess the idea came to her to start recording videos. She did that out of her car. And it was just, just her in her car and she got her husband to jump on the bandwagon and it is very impressive that here this black woman who is young with a family who's married who has an audience of a million on youtube and um pe and people know her even celebrities know her and she's been able to build this empire and that's that's just okay. that's I'm very sorry about that Oh, go ahead. You still here? Yeah, I'm here. I was just talking about Tasha K that, you know, I'm what she's built is very hey, impressive. Can you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can't hear you. I hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm I'll gonna... I'll come oh, back. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Girl, I ended up hitting the mute button. <laughs> so the whole time I was talking, I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, but you was That's okay. Girl. That's okay. All I was talking about was that um with this whole Tasha K thing uh -huh. is that um the only thing is that I, I feel like this is the difference between infamous and um, famous. Right. And, you know, infamy, you usually gain that because 
you became famous off of something salacious. Right. And so Tasha's not famous. She's infamous because of this incident with Cardi B. Mm -hmm. Cardi B. But in spite of all that, I mean, I hate what happened with that case, but I still can't take away someone's flowers. And that girl started from the bottom. She said she had a ninth grade education. Mm -hmm. And it is very impressive that she has an audience of a million. And she, she has people employed. And mm. girl, you never see a girlfriend asking for a GoFundMe. Mm. He's not asking for that for this case. So that's amazing. That means yeah. she has some benefactors, some private mm -hmm. benefactors yep. who really support her. Maybe and that husband got that long African money. Yeah. 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 And um, were you were you a fan? Are well, are you a fan of Cardi B? Um, I would say no. Because I feel like if I say I'm a fan, that means I buy her music. Mm -hmm. um, I would go to one of her concerts. But just to say, in case you get Barty Gang attacking you, attacking right. your channel for me saying this, mm -hmm. I'm not really into rap like that. Mm -hmm. I really do like, I really am into jazz, but I have my moments where I want to be ratchet and I'll listen to rap. But right. I'm not really a Cardi fan. I'm not even an, I'm not really even a Nicki fan. So Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a Nicki he, fan and I like Cardi B too, but when it comes to like I have to look at it as artistry. Like right. when it comes to artistry, I like Nicki. I'm I'm a straight up Nicki fan and yeah. I'm straight up uh Foxy Brown fan because I'm a Fo now I would now if you would ask me Foxy Brown, I am a Foxy mm -hmm. Brown fan. Okay. You, know, you can tell my age. I have, yes, my age I have all her CDs. Yes. Even right now. Right. So right. I'm a Foxy. I'm a Foxy Brown fan. I'm sorry. Me and too. I'm Foxy over Little Kim. Don't get mad at me. But yeah, me I love me some Little Kim. But when I when it came came to that era, I played both of them. I was, mm -hmm. I was always buying Foxy stuff. Always buying Little Kim stuff. And um, I wish they didn't play them against each other. And I, I think. Know. And, and then with Kim and seeing how she colorism kind of played a part in her oh, life, God. it's just sad. It's sad. And I'm glad that Foxy, Foxy stayed down when it came to not letting the industry try to destroy her in that kind of way because they was playing them against each other. For real. Aren't you ready to see like little Kim's story like on Lifetime or something? Yeah, like, I, I, I just want to understand like you were such a beautiful girl before you changed all this stuff on you. I you know, know. like what? It, so it really, really makes you think. think. What'd you say? It, I'm sorry, but it really makes me think like, is there somebody behind this? You know what I mean? Was they the say that it was the men in the industry at that time. Mm -hmm. And they would have the video chicks and the ambiguous looking black girls coming in. Mm -hmm. And when you're constantly seeing that, you're sitting there and you're looking over yourself like, oh, well, maybe I can maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do that. Even Nicki Minaj said in her Joe Budden interview, which I was shocked that Nicki was this open. This was probably earlier this year. Uh -huh. She said, Little Wayne, they would have the video chicks come in there, and it would be girls that had, I guess, a natural booty. Okay. And Wayne, them would be drooling, and they would always be talking about the butt. And she says she was in Atlanta and she illegally got like butt shots. Oh Allegedly. What well, she said, it's, it's not alleged. It's on you. The Joe Budden interview is still up. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, and that's a, that's another thing um, when it comes to us like trying to, you know, mm -hmm. alter our body, our real yep. body, based on what other people's perspective of us are because yep. of aesthetics, what they see when they first see you. Because men are visual, like, like yeah. they're really visual. You know what I'm saying? Would Would you ever do that when it came come to a relationship? Would you try to change your like gets bigger breasts or smaller breasts or bigger butt or you know what I'm saying to impress mm. the man. Maybe I would have if I maybe if I wasn't so scary, I wouldn't have done the butt stuff because to me, I kind of knew that was gonna play out. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I don't really need the breast thing, but I probably would have like when I was younger, I probably would have like gotten some fat sucked out. Yeah. yeah I probably yeah. would have done that. Yeah. Um, but you know what Nikki said too, and Joe said in that interview, mm -hmm. because of women coming into rap, these female rappers seeing that, uh -huh. it's almost that Nicki Minaj Cardi B look is the starter kit. So now you notice these new rap chicks come into the game and they, excuse me, they all are getting like BBLs. They're mm -hmm. getting breast implants. There's a girl from Houston. You probably heard her song. I can't think of her song. They used to have a TikTok, but her name is Erica Banks. I've, I keep hearing about er, uh, Erica Banks based on she doesn't want her. She wouldn't want yes, me, that's like her. me in her friend group. But you know why they were hard on her? Because mm -hmm. she, she went earlier this year and got a BBL and got breast implants. And, and she has like lip injections. Um, oh my gosh, and and she was a like small, petite, petite, like girl, but beautiful. I mean, she was beautiful the way she looked, but mm -hmm. I think, unfortunately, with misogyny, especially mm -hmm. in an industry like rap, I think that's pressure on women. I mean, it's pressure on us, us everyday women. But I, it's just sad to think that these women are coming into that game. Mm -hmm. And feeling like I got to alter myself to be good enough. Like my skills, my smarts, you know, my, the way I spit my lyrics is not good enough. I got to, but like you said, men are visuals, mm -hmm. but are they, but are they bronze, the biggest consu consumers and supporters of female rap? I don't know. You don't think so. I don't think so either. So why cater to them? Right. And you know what? When, when it comes to rap, I remember this hearing years ago that most of these rappers don't make their money from me and you. Yep, that's true. Mm -hmm. Their own kind. They get it from the other, the white race, the Asian race, yep. Spanish, yep. Mexican, Spanish, yep. Hispanic, you know, race. But not from, they're not really, you know, financially supported by the black people yeah that's who's at their concerts yeah you know? that's, yeah and it's a difference so that's they're getting their money from us in different ways mm -hmm. from t-shirt sales hat sales clothing. award shows yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah would you so would you would you have or would your younger self ever have like altered your body because of a relationship or you know society no, because of the strong mind that I have, like I consider myself very strong minded and, mm -hmm. and that can be to a fault, you know what I'm saying? But knowing the person that I am growing up and taking a lot of verbal abuse from people in society, people, I remember being in middle school, high school, being joked and, and, and taunted about my complexion. I'm too dark. Um, I got a flat butt, you know, just no breasts and stuff like that. But I was a tall woman, skinny anyway. It's just that I didn't have any fat on me. I didn't have no, you know, no real fat on me. So it didn't matter to me or not. I was still getting, I'm sorry. I was still, you know, dating. You know what I'm saying? Well, we won't, we won't have to tell people how we know each other. But from a distance, yes. hearing you say that, it's so odd. I... I kind of assume that you grew up having pretty privilege. No. Because no, you, you know, all. you were like, uh, you were popular. I mean, I didn't go to school with you, but I, when I entered areas that you had been, you mm -hmm. were considered popular. So it's always odd when I hear, you know, your version of the story. It's odd because I'm like, Right, and then right. how I how you know I saw you from afar. Mm -hmm. um, I you know I I just felt like God. I wish I looked like that. And when you you know how you you would say stuff like that, and I'm like, girl, I wish I looked like you. I would have I would have been mm -hmm. way farther ahead because 
still to this day, you know what I'm saying? Even as a, a older woman, almost in her fifties, you know what I'm saying? I still struggle with that because when I go out, say for instance, I go out to the grocery store, I'm mm -hmm. getting people looking at me in different ways. Like people see us in different ways. Like even you would probably feel the same way when you go out, someone is always looking I, at you judgmental with their eyes. They're not I saying do. it. I think part of it too, I mean, I believe you're taller than me, but I do think, and maybe I'm crazy. I do think there's something to do with like height. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I, I feel like I have really strong features, you know, mm -hmm. the thick eyebrows, the big yes. lips. And I think like that jumps out at people because, um, you know, where I told you I had went on Friday, mm -hmm. um, I swear to you, people were like coming up to me and I had on. I had on shoes that weren't really appropriate for that event. Mm -hmm. So the shoes gave me even more height mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and people were like coming up to me nonstop. And the person I was with, we laughed and said, if we could take a shot, if we, <laughs> we came in with alcohol, uh -huh. if we could take a shot for every time somebody's going to come up to me. And so, mm -hmm. and I've lost weight now, but even when I was even bigger, when I mm -hmm. had weight on me and I would wear heels and I had height, it's like I just stand out. And I, and I think that also messes with my confidence because I, I tell people I don't like attention and they don't believe me. And I'm yes. like, I don't because people come up to me like I'm an alien or something like, ooh. Well, see, people come up to me. They're not that friendly when they see me. Mm. I don't know it's because of my height too, but see, they could be looking at you with, and different with your mm -hmm. height, with yeah. your color too. You know what I'm saying? But with me as a black woman, dark skinned woman, I don't get that. I get I get the men looking at me, but the women, I get them tooting their nose at, at me. You know what I'm saying? Like, ugh, you know, or yeah. I, when I go through drive through, I'm always that's why I that's I why think I it, they're the intimidating. That I, I think it's an intimidation. I think I think male people, you know who that is when I say mm -hmm. male people. I think male people are intimidated by like I feel like when you are like a black woman, especially if you have some height on you, mm -hmm. if we are not smiling and saying, Hey, yes, sir, mm -hmm. can enjoy, it's like we automatically, we can't help it. We automatically have confidence even when we don't feel great that day. Right, right, right. And, like when, that. and that's right. it. And they're, and they're intimidated. And then the, the problem with society is like whatever they think of one, one of us, they've assigned that feeling to each and every black person we walk across. But let us, let us have that same feeling. Right. You know, how dare we think everybody is like David Duke mm -hmm. or like Trump. How dare you think I'm like that? Right, right. And you know what? Like it's it's to me, like I always say, there's two sides to um, <laughs> everyone. Yes. Yeah. You may get me on a certain day just being very open, going outside, being very open. And that's why I say I, I, I do a lot of my vlogging and recording of my experience. No one else's experience, but my experience. Hi, I am seen towards other people. So when I go, like, say, for instance, to Dunkin' Donuts and have a bad experience, I don't, I tend to uh, tie that into me being a Black woman. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Me mm -hmm. being uh, a darker skinned woman, me with a woman with a big nose, big lips, and some other person will may, may not think that. You know what I'm saying? They may yeah. not think that. They just might be thinking, that, oh, I'm just having a bad day. Yeah. This person is just rude. You know what I'm saying? No, but when I have a bad day because someone treated me wrong, I'm thinking, I have to think that way because nine times out of 10, they, that's what they were doing. They were judging me. You, you you know one day later on i i wonder if you could create a show and just talk about the experience of being a woman and um i know they talk about colorism but because we you and i have some distance in between us but we have some familiarity you know what i'm saying yes, um, yes. <clears throat> it's just that i I can't, I, I, I feel comfortable having a conversation 
with you, someone I have familiarity with, that's a dark skinned woman, because, you know, and if, and if, and if you heard from one of my friends, like my roommate from college, mm-hmm. she's like, Angela's so against that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like she's, you know, like was talking about this other girl, like, you know, mm-hmm. she's so against that, but it's like, I feel comfortable because I know you know my heart, and I also right. I like the I I also respect how you see it as being a dark skinned woman, but when I knew you from a distance, you know mm-hmm. our age is different. I totally never imagined my my I, my blinders were on. And mm-hmm. the experience that you're talking about for you, I saw that with other dark skinned women. Yes. And like I said, I thought you had pretty privilege because to me, you were so, I mean, you still are so pretty. Like, I don't, but know. I don't see that. I don't, I, mean, like, I know that I'm, I know that I'm very, I'm, I'm attractive. It's but when just, I go it's out, crazy to me. Yeah. But listen, but when I go out, I don't get that. I don't, it's hard. You know, it's, I, I, and I'm not like pulling your leg. I, I remember there was an event years ago that we both were at. And that was like the first time it was a sad event. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go on it on the call, but you'll figure it out. It was a sad event. And mm-hmm. I remember you said a statement and that was the first time I thought that I never, I just, I mean, I guess it's because I had saw so many other like tall girls who would like their posture was never like if they had low confidence, low self-esteem, you know. And then I just remember like, he, you know, like I said, we didn't go to the same schools, mm-hmm. but I remember hearing about you later mm-hmm. and like it was always like positive things. And then from when I saw you from a distance, I was just like, oh my God, like her hair, her skin, she's skinny, you know, like, you know, she, and I hate to say this because it's I, I hate when white people say it. And I really don't say this in my today's life. So this is my younger self saying this statement. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't even say like, and she speaks so well. That was but my you younger self. I would Thank never you so much. <laughs> I, I just want to say that, not to cut you off. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I always tell you that I really do. And I see the same thing in you because I always, you know, speak so highly of you too. You know, I just love you because you're, you're so confident and, and passionate and very intellectual. You know what I'm saying? I love that. I love it. Yeah. But you know, I just it's want to It's in my blood, girl. It's in the blood. It, yes. Yes, it is. Wait, yes, wait. it is. <laughs> Yes, it is. But listen, the, I, I just want my viewers to know that um, even though that, like you were saying, that I, I, I was, you know, you know, like that and everything, I still had confidence now. I was, I was, I'm a very confident person in who I am. I love, yeah. love I'm thankful. I, I always say I'm thankful to God. He made me the way that I am. But yeah. I know I'm different. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I've always had life show me that I was different. Different. Like all of us are different. You know, mm-hmm. you're different. You have gorgeous features. You know what I'm saying? You have those beautiful, beautiful eyes. Look at your eyes. See? And um, we have something in common. We have a lot of stuff in common. We have a yeah. lot of differences too. And I think that's what's great. And that's why I would love for you to come back on weekly if you can, or we mm-hmm. can even do it every other week or monthly, whatever your schedule allows, because you know I'm free. I always be doing this stuff. But um yeah, you know, it works I, out for me. Yeah, I I think I think it'll be, you know, it's a good out. It will be a good outlet. We'll figure something out. Good outlet for me and 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 you know, coming to your space. I thank you for inviting me. Especially, I'm sure your viewers understand this. Being able to come to a space and pe- and uh, feel comfortable mm-hmm. because. Mm-hmm. some of the lives I'll see, I'll be wanting to jump on someone's live and make a comment and, mm-hmm. you know, say they'll have a panel and people are disrespectful or you might say something the the creator doesn't agree with. And, 
Right. So it's like, you know, you want to feel comfortable. Like, it ain't no need to attack people. You just calling it. This is just the internet. This ain't the right. real streets. Right. <laughs> exactly. And man, I got a wake up call for real. Like, I don't know if you, you paid attention to that, what I was saying. I don't know if you saw mm -hmm. that. Yeah. 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 Okay. I got really chewed out. But that was another reason why I don't go onto people's uh, platforms anymore and, and join their lives. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's because of this. I'm a person like if I get a feel attacked or get attacked, I really go into myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I it know that I'm. I'm mm -hmm. an introvert and extrovert, but when I'm attacked, like, I am human, and it takes mm -hmm. me a while to come back out of it. And that this is something I didn't care for that person. Do you do you remember long, long ago mm -hmm. on Instagram? You probably don't remember. You passed me that person's like, mm -hmm. oh, check them out, and I said, I, I said, <clears throat> I said, when I get a chance, oh. I'll tell you why. But I don't care for yes. them. It's yes. like somebody could do something you ain't even doing. It. You could you could do something, bronze, mm -hmm. that ain't even related to me. Exactly. Let's say you do something to a handicapped person or a dog or something. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm not a dog. I'm not handicapped. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like God will be like, hey, you just saw their true colors. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, yeah. and I can't, and I, I could never, and even when I tried to watch that person's, I think Again. we're talking about the same person. Um, no, this was another oh, thing. Okay. Issue. Um, no, no, because they don't do this. That okay. person we're talking about, they don't do stuff. Oh, like okay, this. okay, okay. I'm talking okay. about like, um, the reason why I have fear of going on someone else's channel, and um, oh, no, you have to tell me about that later. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll get to that later. We can talk about that on the next show <laughs> uh -huh. without saying, you know, being specific. But um, because it, it, when I first, like, let me tell you guys about, like, the, like a, a sector that I used to go into, like, I still go into, and I look, but I'm in the bushes more now. I used to support a lot of people, but I didn't realize that they were beefing with the people that I was watching too, because there's so many of them, you know what I'm right. saying? Like the beef sector. Let's talk mm -hmm. about the beef sector. So I will go over there to the beef sector, and there was this one lady, she had a show, and then she had people on her live, like this stream yard, and um, it was probably about six people on at a time, and then I came on there. No, I was listening to it first, and then it was this one lady that was agitating me in the, you know what I'm saying? She was on the panel, but she was agitating the shit out of me. <laughs> And so I, I don't know, maybe had maybe too many glasses of wine. I don't know. But I got on that show and then I cut up. OK. And I said, you know what? I'm never doing that again. I'll just oh, stick to, to my, my channel. No, yes. I didn't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> so I got on there and I was just, you know, cutting up. But because the lady was just being so, I don't know. It's just a, it's something about like, I don't have, a, I don't, I'm not against anyone like, based on race really like that unless it's it's really really personal right mm -hmm. and this lady was really agitating me with her tone and what she was saying and I, I don't know if it's a Caribbean thing but sometimes the Caribbean people and no offense to you guys I love mm -hmm. you guys it's just that like every now and then I hear that tone I don't know if oh you yeah well I feel like in general mm -hmm. and again no offense to them like you said I do feel like, and this is another thing we could talk about, maybe another time, but um, just a little pin and the piggyback off of what you're saying. I feel like in general, like Caribbean people, as well as some African people, and of course, we ain't talking about every single one. Exactly. I feel like it's a tone, it's a way, it, it's a way they are mm -hmm. with us. Yes, with us. The African. And I yes, it's like when you look at the African diaspora, mm -hmm. everybody in the diaspora except the U.S. the U.S. blacks mm -hmm. get treated differently. Mm -hmm. Like, we, well, we do. We get treated differently. It's just mm -hmm. like a way. It's a way. Yeah. And you know, they touched, they touched on that um, on several reality shows. Let's, let's pick it up. Really? This, this, uh, like Mary to Medicine. Have you watched that yet? I this have, I, but I, I only, I haven't finished the season. I'm behind, but I can, I can jump in and if whatever you talk about, I can jump in because okay. I've been watching it all seasons, 
But this season, I've been slacking, so I'm probably up to episode two. Okay, but I well, can still have a conversation about okay. it. Okay. Well, the, there was an incident that happened. I don't want to just tell everybody all of it because they need to go watch that, that season, the season, that, the current season now. Well, they could, watch, they could go, you could tell it, and then they could go watch it and get their own opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Toya, uh, there's there's this new oh, African, yeah. I saw an African on the mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. She's an attorney. Yep, she's marrying and, a dentist, right? Yeah, married to a dentist. And I mm -hmm. don't know some of these people's names offhand, okay? But Toya has been on there for years. Right, and right. Toya is from Detroit, okay? Mm -hmm. And the African attorney is from Nigeria, I think. Ghana, yep. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And when they got into their spat, they were having a conversation. And the Nigerian uh, young lady, she was like very, very vocal about, okay, I'm from Nigeria and we don't do it like that. And, and this is how we do it. When mm -hmm. we come over here, we, po we coming over here to mm -hmm. the top, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. stuff like that, pretty much, in other mm -hmm. words. And mm -hmm. Toya was like, girl, sit down. You know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. So they got into a, a heated argument one night. And the Nigerian brushed up onto Toya. So Toya she, like pushed her off of her by pushing her head down with her hand. Like took her hand and put her hand on her head. The Nigerian woman attorney's mm -hmm. head. And smashed her down. Like smashed her, you know. Mm -hmm. So they broke it up. But it's some scene that we didn't see that they didn't see. They didn't show. Bravo didn't show or you know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, this thing is getting really ridiculous. It's because of that same attitude that some, not all, come over here and, and do. But it, even in a, uh, I heard an African woman um, give the, her analysis, her opinion of this. And she, as an African woman who lives in Africa or whatever, she was interviewing and she said, you know what? It is true that we tell our children to go and get the highest, be an engineer, be a doctor, be a dentist, be an mm -hmm. you know, attorney, something, you know, professional, high standing professional. Right. Mm -hmm. And she said, but one thing we don't, you know, she's like, we do real recognize is this the attitude. We, when you go over there, the Africans are having this, this elitist, uh, mm -hmm. elitist mm -hmm. attitude. And then, you know, looking down on the Africans over there. And she said, let me re remind you guys that you're standing on the backs of those Africans. Oh, you took the words out of my mouth. Mm. That if, what, if it wasn't for them over there, you wouldn't even be going over there. Ex oh my God. Like I was waiting for you to finish. I was going to say the almost the exact. Mm. Oh my God. You took the word. I, I was like, oh my God, Bronze, you are opening up a can of worms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like, yeah, I feel like Africans, they come over here and even, even black people from the, the diaspora, mm -hmm. they come to the States. And they're able to get opportunities, mm -hmm. buy homes, do this and do that. And then they look at us and go, why weren't you able to do this? Mm -hmm. It's like, do you know that we were the cheat code? You're, okay. Because of what we've done. Do, do you know, like, it, it's because of us. It's because of, like, the sacrifices that we have, we continue to go through. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes, I sometimes think, and I've experienced this because I, I dated about four years ago. I dated more, it was more than four years ago. It was right before Trump came in office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I dated this guy from Africa and he had that same attitude. And I remember him, his, he was divorced. His kids were born in the States. And he was saying that they were not going to celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday. Mm. Oh, what are you? You know, we had a time that day. We oh, I went off on him. We I just couldn't believe his attitude. And he 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 said they weren't learning Black history. They weren't. They he was like they're African. I said yeah, but they were born here in the U.S. I said, mm -hmm. they're African American. If you don't want to, if you don't want to say African American, they're Black Americans. Okay. They were born, their nationality, you know, they're, I said, they're really the true African Americans, if you think about it, because mm -hmm. they're American and their heritage is Africa, African because of their parents. 
they're really the true. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. they're, I'm like, I could not believe that how he was acting. And then he was, he had, like you said, he had this elitist attitude. And I remember this statement he said, and this was again, when I was dating him, this was right before Trump was in office because election night with Trump and Hillary, him and mm. I were having dinner waiting for the results to come in. And I remember mm. a conversation prior to that. He said to me, when the Mayo people go to hire a black person, mm -hmm. they're going to pick a black person like him, like an African over mm -hmm. a, a black American that's from America. Mm. And I laughed at him. I said, I've been in corporate America for X amount of years. Mm -hmm. And actually, some of these people, when they hear your accent, they don't want you and they want the other black person or vice versa. I was right, like, they, right. see, they see us all the same. I laughed at him. I said, they see us all the same. And you know, the funny thing, he said that statement and that rubbed me the wrong way. Mm -hmm. He talked about our names like old oh, names like Tyrone. And I'm like, but your, you know, your last name is, you know, such and such and such. Like, Some, yeah, like, yeah. Like that's the thing. And the thing is, it's like we're being pitted against each other. Yeah. And we shouldn't even be pitted against each other. But that's because they were they're they're raised on this on this other type of I guess what I would say British. <laughs> Yeah, he, mentality. he's, he's you know more like Even British. They're yeah. African. They're but, African. But, you know, you, yeah, you're British and you, y'all were under the the Queen's rule and we all know what that mm -hmm. monarchy did mm -hmm. to PR people, Black people, Indian people and all that. But yeah. funny enough, with him making that statement, short months later, mm -hmm. you know, Trump got in office and Trump was president and I think it was within nine months of Trump's term. You know what Trump said in a statement? He, said, he, said? he said, you know, we're going to stop sending money and tra uh, traveling and something to these shithole countries like in Africa. Mm. Mm. And I went to him and I said, but I thought the male people like y'all better. Mm. What a wake up call. He could not believe it. That really, that really was a wake up call for him. Mm -hmm. But it is, it is that like elitist, that attitude, or like why, why can't you guys do better? And it's mm -hmm. like they don't understand. You're coming from a society. You're coming from a society, a country, where, um, and I'm not talking about the whole continent, but like mm -hmm. countries in that continent where the whole society, majority, everybody looks alike. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so you guys deal with classism when over here in the U.S., we we deal with race and we do deal with like class issues like mm -hmm. we're dealing with a myriad of issues, issues you, like you, you gender, I, yeah. gender identity, gender, this yeah. uh, skin tone. Yeah, um, you like in some of those African countries or like when you go to places like Jamaica, you hear about the kids going to private school. Mm -hmm. And then you come and you look at us and like why aren't we as educated? We mm -hmm. we even we're in the year 20 um 2022 and there are still schools, school zones mm -hmm. that people are not aware of where the the school system is performing segregation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you wonder why your kid is going to that D school, it's because they're doing segregation. But the difference is from now and the 1950s and mm -hmm. so on is because it's more hidden. It's very hidden. It's it's, it's ridiculous. It's like people got to wake up. Mm -hmm. it's and, then, hidden. and then we have the we have our, our, our people that are just sedentary, just comfortable, just. Yep. You know, they don't even want to uh, speak up. They don't want to challenge. They don't want to challenge, challenge anything. Yep. They go with the status quo. It's mm -hmm. like, well, well, that's how it always was. And okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I really enjoyed this conversation with you. We're at our hour and 15 Ooh, minutes. Wow. wow. You did a great job today. I am so happy thank you so much i am really, really well grateful. thank you for inviting me and allowing me to chit chat
Mm -hmm. so, is there anything, any other issues you want to um, brush on or just talk? talk? Um, I would, you know, I, briefly, I was, I was going to mention, um, you know, like Bishop Whitehead, but I'm sure your viewers can go and look up that. That's uh -huh. just a mess. Um, no, I'm going to talk about it if you want to. I have a few more minutes. I have um, about 30 more minutes. Well, if we briefly just talk about, um, okay, you know, the whole controversy with Bishop Whitehead, just to give a quick recap to you. Mm -hmm and your viewers oh yeah you know, I did, a, I did a, a little segment i didn't talk but i just shared an article about how okay you know, well then they can go back and watch that video so mm -hmm. you know that that so i was questioning uh, a friend and saying and he's a uh, he's super this person i was talking to he's super religious mm -hmm. and i said well now that it's come out that he really was robbed and they've caught the robbers mm -hmm. is there any guilt that is filled felt by you or by the black community that we judge this man because of his aesthetics. And when you think about it, when you look at the Pope, the Pope is walking around with like a million dollar piece of gold. I mean, it's not hanging out, but he wears it under his cloak. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is there any kind of guilt that we feel like, you know, this man has been rehabilitated. He did, you know, he does have a past. He's doing what he believes is God's work. Okay. But we did the thing to him. I am guilty of the thoughts I had too. But we but we did the thing to him that, that male people do to us all the time. Mm -hmm. And they look at us and judge us and say, that person doesn't measure up because they look too flashy. They're black. You know, they have on this or that. And I, I was mm -hmm. like, do, do we do any of us feel any guilt? Like we thought that he was responsible for the robbery. I don't um, know. Yeah, I think we prejudged him. I, I know I can be yeah. guilty of it. I um, think I prejudged him. But I, yeah, but the other situation about the woman and him putting his oh, hands yeah, on her. Yeah. I don't think that no. I prejudged him. I, I ain't talking. I ain't went that far. I ain't talking now. I don't appreciate what he did to the woman. But I, I was just saying. I like you. I was like, I prejudged him when I saw the video of the robbery. I thought, yeah, he had something to do with it. He's wearing Gucci suits and and mm -hmm. this and that. But I don't agree with him putting his hands on that woman. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you saw saw more into that story. Yeah, well, let me let me go back to what we were yeah. saying about prejudging okay. him. Now, I did say I, I, I'm a little guilty of prejudging him because, yes, I did judge him. I don't know him, and mm -hmm. I'm just giving my own opinion about him, and so are, I know you are too. But here's the thing. If you're weighing um, several hundred of dollars of jewelry in front of a congregation that can barely pay their rent, am I mm -hmm. really prejudging him? Well, I was just, pre I'm not talking about that piece. Mm. I was prejudging him thinking that he was a part of the robbery. I do think but, that if you're a minister. That's what I'm talking and you about. Are making, that, Aren't now, you putting that yourself part, out there to be robbed? Well, th that part, my problem with him where I'm not, I don't feel guilt about it is like, you are wearing so much fancy stuff and your flock mm -hmm. doesn't even bring home an inkling of what you're wearing and you're in a rough neighborhood mm -hmm. it makes it questionable you so I I just, you do, yeah i see what you said i would say he was a part of making it questionable man he question he's questionable when he comes in putting on them skinny jeans i'm sorry <laughs> yep <laughs> so Sorry, he, he's a little suspect too. You know, you, that's what uh, they saying it in other channels. It just seems a little zesty to me. I'm just, I'm being honest. Yeah, you know, we use as a content creator and as a person in, in the community of Black culture, we're gonna use the same terminology as anyone else, any right. other channel. Because I have to say my disclaimer. Listen, just because you hear me saying stuff. I can say it because, and, and so can my guests can speak their minds the way they want to speak their mind because all of us have a different background. We were raised differently. We were raised mm -hmm. in certain in instances. 
Um, but we also are aware of what's going on in our culture and in, in this world because we hear the same stuff that everybody else does. You know what I'm saying? But also we may use the same terminology when I'm saying like zesty and, you know, skinny jeans. They know what I'm talking about. Disclaimer. They know what I'm talking about. So when you hear me saying that, yes, other people use these words and it's not to harm anyone at all we're not we're not doing that i'm yeah. just sharing my news sharing my commentary to for critical because you know with fair use we can share information and talk about things based on critical analysis okay news commentary mm -hmm. entertainment purposes like that okay so I, had, I had to say that so we are allowed to share this freedom of speech pretty much yeah. But I'm not here to defame anyone's character um, or or to cause anyone harm. OK, because, you know, after seeing what happened with Tarsha K and, and Cardi B, this that's saga. OK, I don't want nobody coming after us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but if the person that we're not stopping after, their funds, if the person that came after me said, hey, I don't appreciate it. Stop. I'm going to yeah. stop. I don't yeah. understand why she didn't stop. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But but yeah, and my my opinions are my own, and they're just my opinions. Facts. I don't I don't know these people personally to have any yes. kind of facts that's on them. Right. I love that. Thank you. You know, because on and on, you know, this social media stuff, we have to say stuff like allegedly because we don't know these people. Yeah, and we have the right to give our opinion because that's why we're bloggers. You know what I'm saying? And we're just giving our critical analysis over this. And that's it. Like we're not trying to stop anyone's bag. We're not trying to, you know, do any of that. So thank you so much for you're welcome. I just want to put one little thing and I I don't I don't want I'm not gonna talk any commentary, but for any of your listeners, if there, you know, a lot of us have student loans. And mm -hmm. so I hope everyone's like paying attention to what's going on with this student loan forgiveness. It's not a whole lot of money. But the Republicans are now suing Biden and the government mm -hmm. because they're they're issuing because they want to give people this relief for student loan money. I think that's a who like you're going to sue because something good is being done. So that's if, crazy. Yeah. So if people have student loans, make sure you go and sign up on FAFSA, I think it's dot org. Mm -hmm. So you can get the emails and get the alerts. So when it's time to, um, and I don't think they're going to have a lot of steps that you need to do to get mm -hmm. this money, but you just, you want to be on that email distribution. So you yes, get the alert you to go it's, it's, it starts in this month, actually. Yes, but yes, but they just haven't given an exact date. They just keep sending out like, Hey, this mm -hmm. is what's going on, and we're we're still getting stuff together, and more information will be to come. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 you know, it can be a task to keep going to the site, the website yeah. checking. So you yeah. want to make sure you're on their email distribution. You sign up for for it. Yeah, because you hey, have a chance. Put uh, send it to me, and I'll put it in the description of this video. Okay, I will. That would be will. great. I'm okay. Sure. Listen, I have student loans out the yin yang, and I do too. any little thing that can mm -hmm. drop it, drop it down, I will go. For, I mean, I'm with it, and I, I think yep. it's a great thing. And whoever's trying to stop that is just ridiculous. I mean, you're stealing from the poor anyway. You know what I'm saying? You, you you're just trying yeah. to be too greedy. They're trying to be too greedy. And Keep in mind, uh, people like Matt Gates and, and Marjorie Green, who are two of the most egregious Republicans, um, they got their PP their PPP loans forgiven. But you, what? but they are two of the main ones that want to fight this uh, student loan forgiveness. See, that's that 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 PPP mentality. loan forgiven. That's that elitist mentality. I'm telling <laughs> Do you. you know yeah. Do you know that P. Diddy got his PP loan forgiven? Are you serious? Yes. Like the rich can get it just wiped off, just yes. off the books. But as soon as a little poor person like me who just need those me little too. 50 classes paid yep. for, but can't get a, another grant or can't get yep. any, no more student loans because I'm um, over my aggregate limit, you know what I'm yep. saying? And I'm getting ready to go back into re repayment. 
I will never, you know, I will have to pay out of my pocket with, you know. So guys, you gotta have, you gotta just, you gotta stay um, on it. You gotta yep. check in those emails, and when time comes, apply for that that um, deduction. Okay, exactly, because it's very important. Thank you so much, Hart, for um, sharing that with us. And remember, like whatever other topics you would like to talk about, let's do it. Let's keep talking. Okay. I think someone will benefit from listening to our videos. And already, we already have seven views. It may not show up on YouTube as seven views. But eventually our views are going to get up there. And um, I just want, we want to just inspire people to keep moving forward and keep working on yes. whatever it is that they need to work on to help level up their lives and their family lives in whatever way they can. Um, they can. And if you have any last words to add that's, to that. That's it. Thank you again. And uh, maybe, you know, we can get together later and maybe talk about if I can come on again. I've enjoyed my time. I've been watching you for years. Thank and you so, so um, I, I love hearing from content. people who support me. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. I benefited from your content. And so, you know, it's it's a big plus to be able to come on your uh, platform and thank chat you. with you directly. So thank, thank you, so you so for inviting me. Yes, you're welcome. And if you're willing to do this every week, we can do it. Just let me know what days work for you. But it, okay. uh, to me, I think nine, nine o'clock, ten o'clock would be great. So it could be a weekday or a weekend. It okay, be available. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be every Saturday or every Sunday. You know, whenever it's beneficial to you. Because okay. listen, I be going live all through the week, child, whenever I can. Because I think you know, I think it's just important that I stay. Um, constant consistent right. to say consistent in my content in order for it to grow because I had a setback on my main channel mm -hmm. where that I am you know blocked from posting going live or or sharing any mm -hmm. old videos that are on private I can't take them off private until I'm to the seven days are up so I have a lot of content guys you want to go check out my old channel my my main channel and um watch some of those old videos but thank you so much for joining us we really appreciate you listening don't forget to like comment share and subscribe okay and meet us next week on sunday at 10 o'clock yeah blessings thank you so much all right peace all right. Bye. peace